Today, down, down, lending is down. Hello again, I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst of Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The ABS has released the first in its new combined series of household and business finance. It's series 5601.1, Lending to Households and Businesses, Australia, December 2018. So we look at the data. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider supporting our efforts. You can make a one-off donation via PayPal, here's the link, or consider joining our Patreon program. Again, here is the link. We really appreciate your support to help us to continue to make great content. The links are also in the comments below. The new data required a rebuild of our analytics, but it is very clear that the rate of growth of new credit continues to ease across the board. The focus of the release is credit flows, the rate of new loans being written. The RBA, of course, reports the stock at the economy level and APRA, the bank ADI stock. But today we look at the flow data. Owner occupied lending flows fell by 1.59% from November to December, down $310 million. Investment lending fell 1.6%, down $125 million. And personal credit fell 1.17%, down $68 million. Total credit flows to households fell 1.52%, down $506 million. And business credit flows fell 2.55%, down $866 million. And total credit flows dropped 2.03%, or $1.38 billion, to $66.5 billion. The share of investment loan flows for residential property was 28.5% of housing flows, and lending for business fell to 50.6% of all credit flows. The credit impulse, the rate of change of credit growth, continues to ease, which signals a weaker economy and lower home prices ahead. And significantly, owner-occupied lending is slowing faster than investor lending now. Within the housing categories, the rolling 12-month growth rates in credit flows shows that owner-occupied construction are down 16.7%, finance for new builds is down 14.2%, finance for established property is down 14.3%, and refinance loans are down 10.9% over 12 months. New investment loan flows fell 3.4%, and refinanced investor loans were down 21.3%, which is a significant drop. These are the factors which feed into my overall home price models, and this downward momentum of the credit impulse is highly significant, and why I'm looking for more home price falls ahead. Note again, it's the owner-occupied sector on the slide, not just property investors. And we can look at credit flows for investor purposes across the states. New South Wales is down more than 25%. Victoria down 21.5%. South Australia down 14%. Western Australia down 12%. Tasmania down 24%. The Northern Territory is down 4.7%. And the ACT down a massive 37% all over the past 12 months. First-time buyers continue at a lower rate, as our tracker shows, with 17.7% of new loans for first-time buyers, down from 18.3% last month, a drop of 1,976 transactions, compared with last month to 8,517. And in addition, the number of first-time property investor buyers dropped again. The average loan size for a first-time buyer fell to $337,260, indicating tighter lending standards, while other loans were bigger at $397,404 on average. And finally, personal credit flows were down again, with new revolving loans especially hit hard. The credit tide is definitely receding, so in conclusion, there is nothing in this data to suggest increasing momentum in credit. But then, this is in December, and before the APRA statement that lending standards will remain tight, the 7% hurdle rate still applies, and the Royal Commission left responsible lending rules where they were. So my conclusion is that the credit impulse will continue to slow, and this will have a flow-on effect to home prices and household consumption. So the decade of credit-driven expansion looks to be over for now. The problem is, of course, this will lead to weaker economic outturns ahead and falling house prices. 
That said, credit is still growing unsustainably faster than income or inflation, with housing credit at 4.9% growth over 12 months. But the rate of growth, as we see here, is easing back. And I don't think the credit tap will be opened to 11 again anytime soon. So welcome to a new but uncomfortable normal, one in which those with loans they should never have had in the first place continue to struggle with them, and new borrowers, should they choose to borrow, will need to jump through a whole new series of higher hoops. And also now, UBS has just published a note today, which also underscores greater falls ahead. They say the accelerating fall in home loans shows tighter credit is playing out. Looking ahead, while the Royal Commission didn't make material changes, UBS downgrade their long-held forecast peak to trough drop in home loans from 20% with a risk of 30% to 25% with rising risk of 30%, meaning housing credit growth will likely slow to around 2% year on year by 2020, with a risk that it will be flat. And they also cut their peak to trough forecast of home prices from falling 10% or more if regulators don't ease, to dropping 14%, even assuming the Reserve Bank cuts, with Sydney and Melbourne closer to down 20%. And that is double the 7% decline so far, they say. Hence, they reiterate their non-consensus view that GDP growth slows sharply to 2.3% year-on-year in 2019, unemployment drifts up to 5.25%, and the RBA will cut in November 2019. Now, of course, UBS has tended to be more on the money in terms of the underlying drivers around home lending, but I still think that their downside view is still relatively benign. And of course, my own view is that there will be a peak to trough fall of somewhere between 20 and 30% in Sydney and Melbourne. And frankly, that may well be still an underestimate. But before I go, a reminder that our next live stream event is now scheduled for Tuesday the 19th of February at 8pm Sydney time. Here is the link to the reminder. You can ask a question live or send them to me beforehand, leave a comment or go to my blog. The link is below. I look forward to seeing you there. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.